Hello, I'm Eli, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the first of two table saw jigs needed to produce my wooden star inlay. I'm going to use solid surface for my jig, not just because I'm a countertop fabricator and I've got a lot of it left over. There's a lot of reasons why I like using solid surface for my jigs. One of the big reasons is that it's durable. It's going to last forever. You make one jig and you can have it for the rest of your life as long as you take care of it. It's easy to glue together with CA glue and I like to use Super 77 tack spray to hold a lot of my pieces in place and that Super 77 tack spray wipes off really easy with a little bit of lacquer thinner after you're done using it. It leaves no residue. Your, piece, your jig is clean after that. Some people like using double sided tape and that's fine but for some of my projects because they're so small and detailed like this here the Super 77 seems to be able to give me a lot more accuracy with that than the double sided tape does but that's just me if you're comfortable with double sided tape then use double sided tape this first video is just showing how to make the jig I'm going to be producing a series of videos that will take this star to completion and showing several different ways that you can use the star throughout the video for different inlays, different stages you can stop at where it's still good and I'm going to show you how you can use it even if you don't have a lathe I'm going to take this out to a round inlay billet. This is only my fourth YouTube video and I'm working on better camera equipment and production value. I hope to be able to bring a lot more projects to you through YouTube and kind of show you my process for things and how I do things. I've learned a lot over the years in the woodworking industry and I'm just hoping to be able to pass some of it along to the people who follow my Instagram page and my YouTube page. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Here I have four pieces of solid surface that I've pre-cut. Each piece is four inches by nine inches and they're a half an inch thick. Most solid surface is typically going to be a half of an inch thick. I want the block to end up being a total of two inches thick by about three and a half by nine inches. I'm using CA glue to glue the blocks together. I have Corian glue and I could use it but for the sake of making this video I wanted the glue to dry much quicker. You don't have to use solid surface glue. It's expensive and you have to have a special gun to use the glue. CA glue will work just fine. It'll hold strong just like the Corian glue and for making jigs you don't need anything more than that epoxy is not as good as CA glue for solid surface now when I'm gluing them together that bottom piece I'm leaving a quarter of an inch proud of the other three pieces that way I have a straight edge to use on my miter saw and my table saw in order to square the piece up leaving that quarter inch lip there is just for convenience and ease if you don't put it there it's fine you're just going to end up having to scrape some glue off in order to square your piece up i typically clamp these blocks up with the ca glue and let them sit for about 10 minutes that way the glue can kick all the way through what i'm going to do here in a second is spray the edges with an accelerator that's just going to keep the glue from dripping and running all over the place it's just going to make it much cleaner you can use any clamp here it doesn't have to be a squeeze clamp you can use screw clamps or other kinds of wood clamps really i just use the clamp to keep the pieces from sliding around while the glue is setting up you'll find that when you put the pieces together they like to move around quite a bit Here you can get a better look at that offset bottom edge that I was talking about. This just gives me that straight edge that I can push right up against the fence on my chop saw. And I don't need to worry about scraping the glue off. It just makes my job easier. I'm able to make both cuts real quick and then move on to the next step. One of the common questions here is, do you need a special blade to cut solid surface? You don't. As long as it's got a carbide tip on it you should be fine if it doesn't have a carbide tip it's probably not going to cut the solid surface i like to use an 80 tooth blade for solid surface you can use a coarser blade you're just not going to get as fine of a cut 
Uh, as you can see, this blade is just a standard DeWalt blade. I think it's an 80 tooth, and it doesn't really have any problem cutting through it. These two end cuts do not need to be uh, super smooth or perfect. You're just cutting this block to length. There's no purpose beyond that for these two cuts. As you can see, that cut is not perfectly smooth, but it's everything that it needs to be. Now we're going to cut the block to the right width, which is going to end up being at about three and a half inches. Uh, as you can see, I'm making the first cut with that quarter inch lip on the bottom towards the fence. And then I'm going to make my first cut, taking off roughly about three eighths of an inch. Then I'm going to adjust the saw and cut it so it's about three and a half inches wide at that point. Again, this is just an 80 tooth carbide blade cuts through fairly quickly and nice and leaves a nice smooth edge on it which is what you want for these two particular edges. Please remember to be careful when using your table saw and your chop saw. Solid surface cuts fairly easy but it's still tougher to cut than wood. It takes a little more force to push it through so be very aware of what's going on. Wear safety glasses because the dust from this stuff hurts if you get it in your eye trust me I know it really hurts the table saw that I'm using here is a Delta Rotwell from 1942 it's a belt drive and it uses a 12 or a 14 inch blade I got it for a hundred dollars at an auction and I've been restoring it now that I've squared up the piece I'm gonna cut an angle on one side of my block I'm gonna use my Wixie to set the blade at a 10 degree angle. If you don't have a Wixie, I would highly recommend you getting one. I got my first one about a year ago. Now I have three of them that I keep around the shop on different tools uh, to keep the blades in square or to set angles. It just makes your job a lot easier and a lot faster. And that's always a good thing. It's kind of hard to see here, but if you look at the screen on the Wixie, you can see that the blade starts at 90 degrees, and I'm going to take it down to 80 degrees. And then I'm going to set my table saw so that I can make my first angle cut. When I set up to make my angle cut, I want my 10 degree angle to come up to about an inch and three quarters or an inch and seven eighths on the face of that table saw jig. I don't want it to go all the way down to the very point of that jig and leave a sharp corner. I'm going to show a picture of a cross section of that jig that will have all the dimensions on it and kind of give you a better idea of what I'm doing here. This is a very simple table saw jig that we're making here. There's nothing really special about it and there's no need to overthink what you're doing. What we're making here is a jig to cut a very precise 10 degree angle wedge out of wood and do it consistently over and over again. Our goal here is to create a jig that will allow us to cut a 10 degree angle wedge that's roughly an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide by about nine inches long consistently. We want to be able to make the exact same wedge every single time we make a cut. Consistency is the most important thing here. When you're dealing with something this small and on this scale, if it's off just a little bit, it's going to show in every single piece. Now that I have the main body of my jig completed, I need to rip a strip of solid surface that's a half inch wide by about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. This is going to be support for the bottom and the back side of the jig. This piece that I'm cutting is about 13 inches long. I want it longer than the jig because I not only need a piece for the bottom support on the jig, but I also need a piece to prevent the wedge from kicking out after I cut it on the back side. So I need about 10 inches. I usually always make a little extra just in case, but this piece will do just fine. This piece really doesn't have to be very beefy. Its main purpose is to create a small ledge for the wood to sit on and this will help create consistency for every cut. Now I'm going to use CA glue to glue it on and I want to do this on a very flat surface because I want it to be accurate. 
I'm putting a very fine bead of CA glue on here. I don't want a lot, just enough to glue the piece to the jig. And I'm using my table saw cast iron bed to do this because it's perfectly flat. It's going to be the most precise at this point. Now I'm going to come back and shoot it with some accelerator real quick and this is going to cause the glue to kick instantly. And I'm going to make sure that I'm holding the piece flat with the bed of the table. I don't want any waves, bows, anything like that in it. I want it to be precise. I put that really fine bead of glue on the bottom of that strip because I don't want any glue squeezing out onto the top side so that there's glue in the bottom of that angle and my ledge piece. If you get glue in there, it's just gonna be a pain to come back and scrape it out. Now what you see here is the bottom side of it has a gap. And I'm gonna come and fill that gap in with CA glue. And this is what's gonna provide the permanent bond. That glue will hold forever. As long as you don't drop that jig or do anything crazy with it, you're never gonna to have to worry about that ledge coming off of there. I'm using a medium thickness CA glue to do this. I don't want to use the really thin stuff. If you do and there's any gaps between your uh, base piece there and the table saw jig, the glue is just going to run down the inside surface there and that's going to create some problems for you. I let it sit for a couple minutes just to settle into that crack and let any air bubbles out that might be in there. But then I'm going to come back with a number nine razor and kind of force the glue down into that gap a little bit. I want to make sure it's as full as possible. That's how I'm going to get the best bond and that's how it's going to last the longest. After I've used the razor to push all the glue down into the gap, I'm going to come back and try and get rid of any excess glue that's there on the surface. I'm going to scrape it onto a paper towel and then I'm going to come back and hit it with uh, an accelerator and then let it sit for a few seconds in order to kick all the way. You want to be really careful with the CA glue when you're using it. The fumes that come off of this can burn your eyes, it can burn your nose, and if it gets on your skin when it kicks off it gets really hot. So hot that it smokes and it will actually burn you. So just be cautious and know that the CA glue can cause problems for you if you're not really careful. Once the glue is kicked, I use a number nine razor, just like you would use a wood scraper, to scrape the glue off of the bottom. It actually goes pretty quick. All of this process I've filmed in real time, and it doesn't really take a lot of time or effort to get it done. And as long as you hold that razor blade at a 90 degree, it'll scrape that glue right off of there no problem. Another option is if you have a really flat surface and you want to attach a piece of sandpaper to it and just use that flat surface to sand the glue off you can do that as well but you have to remember this is the bottom of the jig and we want it as flat as possible and I find that scraping it with a razor blade gives me that flat surface that I want without taking off too much material. Now that I've got it all flat I want to glue the back stop on which is a small piece that's going to prevent that wedge from shooting out the back of the jig once you've made your cut. Now I'm putting a really fine bead of CA glue here again. I don't want a lot of squeeze out because if you get that squeeze out on the inside of your jig you've got to come back in there and scrape it out before you use it. Now when I set this piece in place I'm going to leave it slightly off the bottom surface there as you can see. That's because I want the bottom to be perfectly flat. I don't want it catching on anything and I don't want any bumps in there that's going to create an angle change or make the cuts inconsistent. Once I've got that piece glued on there I'm going to hit it with some accelerator and get it to kick off really quick. As you can see my ledge pieces are larger than the template there but I'm going to go ahead and cut them off on the table saw. Now that all the pieces are glued on, I'm going to set up to make my first rough cut. I'm going to make sure the table saw is set at a perfectly 90 degree angle. And I'm going to set the blade so that it is about a 32nd of an inch off of the top of the jig. You want to make sure that the blade of the table saw is just higher than the jig itself. Because you're going to be cutting through that backstop as well. And you want to make sure that you're going through all of that material. Once I've set my saw up, I'm going to make my initial cut. And this is just a rough cut. After I make this cut, I'm going to visually inspect everything, make sure that the cut looks good, 
make sure nothing has chipped or cracked or fallen off as long as uh, the pieces were glued on properly you shouldn't have a problem I've never had one uh, break off or anything like that the piece that you saw fly off of there that was just the off cut at this point I'm going to set the table saw up for the final cut I'm going to move it in that extra 32nd of an inch maybe just a hair more and make one final pass I'm not removing much material here and I want to go through slow this is going to give me a real nice even cut after this cut your jig is finally complete there's nothing really left to do after this. You do want to inspect it though and make sure that there's no glue down in any of those joints. As you can see here, that ledge that holds the piece in place for your consistent cuts kind of creates a cavity where the wood is going to sit in and give you that perfect angle every time. I ended up with about an inch and three eighths here total height for my wedge piece which is perfectly fine in the end each wedge piece I want to end up being about an inch which will create a two inch diameter inlay piece which is what I'm going for for an end product